last night in Los Angeles. Oscar nominations were converted into wins and losses. And to recap all the highlights, I'm joined by our film critic, Lisa Nesselson. Uh, welcome along, Lisa. Now, Hello. you've been awake for something like 31 hours exactly. now covering <laughs> this uh, for us. So we'll, we'll uh, forgive Lisa if she stumbles over anything, but I, I hope you've had a coffee. Anyway, the, uh, the Academy has now spoken. What did they say? Well, in their wisdom, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences decided that 12 Years a Slave was the very best movie released in the U.S. last year. And uh, much as with France's own Césars, which were held this uh, Friday here in Paris, they spread the awards around to quite a few films, except for American Hustle, which won nothing. Here's Steve McQueen, director of the Best Picture winner, 12 Years a Slave. Everyone, everyone deserves not just to survive, but to live. This is the most important legacy of Solomon Northup. I dedicate this award to all the people who have endured slavery and the 21 million people who still suffer slavery today. And also we saw in her first to feature role the Kenyan actress Lupita Nyong'o. She won the uh, supporting Best Supporting Actress Award for her uh, harrowing incarnation of a plantation slave with whom the plantation owner became sexually obsessed. And she gave a very moving mm. acceptance speech, didn't she? Let's take a listen. It doesn't escape me for one moment that so much joy in my life is thanks to so much pain in someone else's. And so I want to salute the spirit of Patsy for her guidance. And for Solomon, thank you for telling her story and your own. And the, uh, the space film, Gravity, that really didn't do too badly either, did it? You can say that again. It won in seven out of the ten categories in which it was nominated, uh, including cinematography, visual effects, and two trophies for Alfonso Cuaron, one as editor of his own movie and one as best director. And all of the acting nominees this year, in my humble opinion, deserve to take a trophy home. But Dallas Buyers Club scooped both acting prizes for men. Supporting actor Jared Leto gave a magnificent acceptance speech, and Matthew McC McConaughey waxed poetic. Now, since he won, that means that Leonardo DiCaprio was passed over yet again. Yet again, <laughs> poor old Leo. But the first thing McConaughey did when his name was announced after kissing his wife and uh, sharing his glee with Gerard Leto was to go about two rows back and give a big bear hug to uh, Leo. With That's whom a nice he, uh, gesture, yeah. he acted in The Wolf of Wall Street, and I think Leonardo was genuinely happy for him. Now, I could have sworn that McConaughey was a hard-working Texan with innate talent, but in his speech, he seems to have drawn inspiration from a more ethereal source. Let's listen. First off, I want to thank God, because that's who I look up to. He's graced my life with opportunities that I know are not of my hand or any other human hand. Um, he has shown me that uh, it's a scientific fact that gratitude reciprocates. This is for the 36 million people who have lost the battle to AIDS and to those of you out there who have ever felt injustice because of who you are or who you love, tonight I stand here in front of the world with you and for you. Thank you so much and good night. All right, let's move on to the Best Actress category now, So that was a tough, uh, tough role this year, tough pick, wasn't it? But the winner in the, the end The winner was... is, again, everyone who was nominated deserved to win, but Best Actress went to Kate Blanchett, who was not at all shy about praising Woody Allen's script and thanking him for the role of Jasmine in Blue Jasmine. She also made a point of ordering Hollywood to stop giving women short shrift. Let's watch. And perhaps those of us in the industry who are still foolishly clinging to the idea that, uh, that female films with women at the center are niche uh, experiences. They are not. Audiences want to see them. And in fact, they earn money. So. <laughs> Oh, good old Kate there. All right, let's talk about the host. Ellen DeGeneres was hosting it for her second time. How did she do? Oh, she was a lot of fun as the host. She was very down to earth. Her delivery is self-deprecating. She made it a lot of fun. And there were some funny running gags, one that started with her asking for a show of hands if anybody was hungry, and she threatened to send out for pizzas. And then she actually did. And they had a she delivery guy show up with pizzas, and they handed <laughs> out cheesy, gooey slices to very famous people wearing very expensive clothing. And then she took the gag a step further by hitting up the wealthy celebs to pony up a tip for the delivery guy so people were throwing cash into her hat. Yeah. And she also announced that she was determined to break the world record for retweets. And so she took a photo of herself with Meryl Streep and a bunch of other uh, high-profile high uh, nominees. Bradley and, Cooper there, Brad yeah, Pitt. And urged people to retweet it. And later in the show, they said that they had succeeded so well that they quote-unquote broke 
Twitter. More than two million retweets. That is actually amazing, isn't it? All right, so that those are the highlights. Mm-hmm. Anything that didn't work so well. Well, you know, thought. the introductory patter for award presenters is hopelessly dull uh, and mealy-mouthed way too much of the time. These people earn their living as actors, but with a few exceptions, one of whom was uh, Kevin Spacey. Way too many presenters seemed like they were meeting their cue cards or the teleprompter for the very first time in their lives. Uh, and the head of the Academy, a black woman, by the way, uh, did a sort of ad for the Academy Museum that is due to open in 2017. So mark your calendar. Okay, so uh, that's a <laughs> premature step. Uh-huh. And she ended by mentioning that last year in the world, five billion movie tickets were purchased in case you were starting to think that movies are a frivolous product of limited interest. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much indeed, Lisa Nesselson. We, we certainly enjoyed your roundup of the Oscars. And now, yeah, go and get some <laughs> sleep. Lisa Nesselson there, our film critic here on Live from Paris for us. Well, it's time now for your latest roundup of what's generating buzz on the internet. Here's web news. You'll never believe this, but I got verbally and physically assaulted and robbed last night in the city. Had things thrown at me because of some Google Glass haters. Sarah Slocum posted this status update to Facebook last week along with a short video clip captured on the device. We see her being jeered by other people in the bar because she was wearing the web giant's high-tech glasses. The incident soon sparked lively commentary online with countless web users offering their support. In this post on Sarah Slocum's Facebook page, one person writes that while this type of attack is relatively rare, people wearing the famous internet-connected headset in public are often given a frosty reception. As the Washington Post reports, this story illustrates the difficulties faced by Google in getting the general public to accept their smart glasses. Well aware of people's reserves, the Mountain View firm posted a guide online last week with do's and don'ts for Google Glass wearers, advising them to ask permission before filming anyone, for example, and to be polite and respectful if people have questions or feel uneasy. The Humans of Global Photo Movement sees people documenting their native cities, taking a photo of a stranger and posting it online along with a quote from the subject. One of the most recent Humans of projects started in January is devoted to residents of Palo Alto in California, but pages from all over the world have been cropping up since 2012, from Rome, Jerusalem, Bangkok, Buenos Aires and Khartoum to name but a few. American photographer Brandon Stanton was behind the initial concept. In 2010, he created the Humans of New York Facebook page, which now has over 3 million likes. His photos have also been compiled into a best-selling book released last autumn. The movement became global through Facebook and has even spread to countries where social networks are blocked, like Iran. The creator of the Humans of Tehran page hopes to show the rest of the world that the Iranian capital is not as far away as you think it is and hopes to challenge stereotypical perceptions of the country by showcasing the diversity of its people. And some have given the movement a comical twist. The Pigeons of Rotterdam page has been set up in the Netherlands, for example, suggesting the birds there also have their tale to tell. So we have shots of birds along with their inner thoughts, like where they should build their nest, for example, or how the wind is ruffling their feathers. After winning over the Twitter sphere with 8.5 million followers, the Dalai Lama has now made his Instagram debut. The spiritual leader of Tibetan and Western Buddhists joined the photo sharing platform at the beginning of February and has posted 20 or so pictures so far, taken notably during his recent trip to the United States. The page is already proving extremely popular, with over 36,000 followers from across the globe. An online petition to save the original Psycho House has been started on Change.org. Fans of the Hitchcock masterpiece want Universal Studios to repair the horror house where Norman Bates had viewers on the edge of their seats back in 1960. There's also a Facebook page urging web users to join the campaign to save the iconic building from destruction. 
That was web news here on Live from Paris. Do stay tuned to us here on France 20. We're going to have the latest international news for you in just a few minutes, including this just in comments from the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov. He's saying that work to suspend the G8 has no grounds. Also hitting back at U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry over his comments on Ukraine. More on that coming up very soon.